Hello everyone! This is exciting news for AI enthusiasts who want to run DIT AI video locally on consumer PCs. Previously, we discussed Mochi1 from Genmo AI, an open source AI video model that enables everyone to run it on their own machines. However, there's a catch. The original server side download weights of these models have very large parameters and significant hardware requirements. The original Mochi1 AI video models required at least an H100 GPU to run. The good news is that Comfy UI has just received an official update allowing it to run Mochi1 with compact versions, enabling these AI video models to work with consumer GPUs. While it won't run on all consumer GPUs, it can operate on NVIDIA 4090 level GPUs. The quality, using FP16 without any enhancements or modifications, produces results like this from just text to video generation. Looking at the state of the art for AI video models, Jamo AI Mochi 1 ranks behind Minimax and above Runway Gen 3 Alpha. This ranking seems reasonable considering the original Mochi 1 has huge parameter sizes and officially requires 4 NVIDIA H100 GPUs to run, as stated on their website, where users generate very high-quality videos. When comparing just the video quality, not considering resolution, the coherence and characteristics of these AI video models are very close to subscription-based commercial services like Runway and other AI video models. But the downside is that Mochi 1 output at 480p resolution and Mochi 1 HD coming soon. The HD version will naturally require higher hardware specifications to run. Hopefully they can optimize it again for consumer PCs. It's particularly exciting that Comfy UI now officially supports these models and can run them without requiring extra custom nodes. Speaking of custom nodes, this new Comfy UI update was based on the first custom nodes for Mochi One wrapper from KJ Custom Nodes, who did the initial implementation testing using different attention methods for generating animations. Regarding using these models, I initially tested the uncompressed, non-optimized, consumer PC version of this AI model last week. I shared my performance results with our Patreon community using the first generation of the Mochi One uncompressed AI model version. Even then, I had to use the FP8 text encoder and text clip because using FP16 wouldn't allow me to generate 5-second videos on an NVIDIA 4090. Back then, that was the original Mochi One from Hugging Face their Mochi One Preview first version, which required 40 gigabytes of download space. When implemented in Comfy UI, it was trimmed down to 20 gigabytes of storage. Looking at the Mochi One Preview for Comfy UI, this was the first custom node developed by KJ. At this stage, when I tested and shared with the Patreon community, it wasn't fully optimized yet. It took about half an hour to generate 5 seconds of video. I don't think many users would find it beneficial to spend 30 minutes creating 5 seconds of cinematic scenes. As I mentioned, it was generating almost 6 seconds at 24 FPS, taking about half an hour. This wasn't convenient or realistic for consumer PCs running the original Mochi One preview models. However, I then discovered the Comfy UI official site had trimmed down these AI video models for consumer PCs. After Comfy UI's latest update, we can use the default Comfy UI nodes. You can now load the diffusion model and clip text just like other diffusion models and use a normal K sampler without needing custom samplers or additional custom nodes. In my previous test, I used KJ's custom node pack for the Mochi wrapper. While I haven't updated to the latest version yet, this was from about two weeks ago, I recommend updating your current Comfy UI system and running it using the official Comfy UI website's method for generating images with default Comfy Core nodes. They've also created several weights files. The first method uses separate split files where you have the weights, text encoder, and VAE model files separately. Here you can find the split files with diffusion models in both FP16 and FP8 formats. For the text encoder, you have FP16 and FP8 options. If you're already running Flux Diffusions, you'll have these tools and won't need to download them again. With an NVIDIA 4090, you shouldn't have issues using the FP16 text encoder. The VAE files, specifically the Mochi VAE tensor files, are now optimized to run perfectly on consumer PCs through Comfy UI. For the first method, follow these instructions. 
Download the model weights to the model's diffusions folder. Place the text encoder in the model's clip folder and store the VAE in the VAE folder. The workflow is quite simple, with a basic style separating three components, the diffusion model, clip loader, and VAE loader. For low RAM solutions, note this is RAM, not VRAM, as these models store data in your system memory. There's an all-in-one package checkpoint file. You can find this in the same Hugging Face page under the all-in-one subfolder instead of the split files subfolder. Look for the machi underscore preview underscore fp8 underscore scaled tensor files. This approach is more convenient, similar to stable diffusion text to image workflows. You load a single checkpoint containing the model data, clip data, and VAE data in one custom node, as all data is processed from a single tensor file checkpoint. This development opens exciting possibilities for comfy UI custom nodes, potentially enabling new ways of generating AI videos. We might see implementations using ControlNet for video-to-video -video modifications, transforming objects in videos into different styles. Speaking of video-to-video, -video, there are already custom nodes for comfy UI Mochi Edit that connect with KJ's Mochi Wrapper, the first custom node wrapper for Mochi One preview models. I'll cover Mochi Edit in another video. Mochi Edit is a video to video editing tool for transforming objects into different styles, like turning a parrot into a dragon. However, these models only connect with KJ's Comfy UI Mochi Wrapper custom nodes, not with the latest Comfy UI native nodes for checkpoints or VAE. Looking at the K samplers in the video to video Mochi Edit workflow, you'll notice the custom sampler for Mochi Wrapper comes from these Mochi Edit custom nodes. It only connects to KJ's Mochi Wrapper custom node package, not the standard K sampler. While you can see the connection points, they won't actually connect to the K sampler, though positive and negative prompts work with the original K sampler. I'll discuss Mochi Edit and the Mochi Wrapper in a separate video focusing on video to video editing. I expect the official Comfy UI update will eventually support video to video within native Comfy UI nodes similar to text to image. Let's try some examples using Comfy UI's latest update with Mochi 1 for simple video generation. Starting with Comfy UI's blank page, we'll use the default text to image workflow. For the simplest way to use Mochi 1, download the Mochi preview repackage models from the all in one subfolder, specifically, the mochi underscore preview underscore fp8 underscore scaled tensor file, 15 gigabytes. Save this in the checkpoint models subfolder. I already have the mochi preview fp8 scale models installed. This is all you need for running on low RAM systems. Preferring faster operation without fp16, using the fp8 models instead. The package includes model data, clip files, clip text encoder, and VAE all in one. After loading this, delete the empty latent image. Instead, use the Mochi empty latent video, which you can find here. Connect the latent data to the latent image in K-Sampler. It's very clear and simple. The length parameter here represents frame numbers set at 25. I suggest starting small. Don't go for 100 or 200 frames. Even with these trimmed down AI video models, I haven't tested fully on the NVIDIA 4090, but they still require significant VRAM to process. Start small and test the performance on your computer. For the text prompt, let's try Red Dragon. Looking at their demos and screenshots, they use simple text prompts, and the clip text can handle natural language instead of the keyword style prompts we're used to in stable diffusion. Let's try Red Dragon Fly on top of Tower. We'll set the CFG low at 4.5 from these examples and use the simple scheduler. For output, I'll use the video combine node for video preview, connecting it to the video output preview. I won't save it, just preview it. We can set the frame rate to 24, as these AI models are trained at 24 frames per second. I'll rename this to Mochi Preview for the file name. That's basically it for simple text to video using native Comfy UI nodes to load the checkpoint clip text, K sampler, and empty mochi latent video. The only external component is the video combined custom node package. The FP8 scaled model starts quite quickly for low checkpoints. After processing the text prompt and entering K sampler, I'll set it to 20 steps to ease GPU load. If the quality isn't good enough, we can increase it to 30 steps as shown in the demo. The VAE decode is the most intensive part of these models. 
we can see the red dragon flying over the tower, though it's not exactly as described. You can slightly see the creature's back. Let's try another iteration with different seed numbers and 30 steps for better results. The repackaged Comfy UI Mochi FP8 models don't load too heavily. Monitoring the task manager shows it's only consuming about 12.8 gigabytes of VRAM. That's reasonable around 13, 15 gigabytes ideally for running FP8 on a consumer PC. While FP8 models won't produce the highest performance AI videos, the text prompt instructions are following through well. The creature is flying to the castle tower as requested, showing it understands simple text prompts. In this case, the red dragon appears more bird-like. Let's try another text prompt and see how it performs. And let's try out something more. I got another cyberpunk environment shot of a woman with dark hair in a ponytail. That's coming from Kling AI, one of the images in this demo showcase. I just randomly picked some text prompts to try it out. Although this is an image, we can use it for AI videos. Let's see how that runs for this text prompt. Yeah, so it's pretty fast. The text encoder doesn't freeze for a few seconds like previously. When I was running Evenflux, the text encoder part would take quite a bit of time and then suddenly jump to K-Sampler. That means they've optimized it. I would say this model is already natively optimized for Comfy UI. So, yeah, although this is in low resolution right now, we can still upscale this if we get a good result. And there you go, we got this one second shot of the hyper 3D rendering styles of a young woman with dark hair, ponytail, and cyberpunk environment style background right here. Looks okay, I haven't optimized the text prompts, or tested what the best sampling method or schedulers are, just following what's in the demo from ComfyUI's official site, and I can get this pretty coherent result already. There isn't any morphing or deformation of the character within these one or two seconds, which is good enough already. So, let's push that a little further. Let's say I want 64 frames. It automatically helps me tune it up to 67 frames because this is 24 FPS. I guess that's going to change my video length. Let's run a slightly longer length of video and see how that performs. And nope, we cannot run 64 length or above. It will freeze like that and I have to force restart ComfyUI. So coming back after restarting ComfyUI, I set it to 49 length to see if this works. This should be the video length in these settings because I don't see other places here that are able to do video settings as well. Yeah, and if I set 25 in the length, that means it's going to be one second of generations plus one frame for the starting point. So hopefully that's going to work. And nope, the 49 length isn't able to go through the VAE decode either. It's stuck here and just doesn't pass those to the video combine. So I guess that maxes out what the memory has in NVIDIA 4090 using this model. Well then, I guess we should go back to 25 length and check that out, restarting my Comfy UI again to see how that performs. So coming back here with 25 length, let's try using non-3D effects instead. I want to try hyper-realistic styles and see how that works for 25 length. So we got the result from 25 length, and it's able to pass that in the VAE decode, enabling us to show this video. Just one second of generation. That's it for a consumer PC maxed out on NVIDIA, 4090 VRAM. Well, it's able to generate above 25 length in the K sampler, of course, because the K sampler is just doing sampling method here. But the important part is the VAE decode. If that isn't able to transform the sampling data and VAE data from noise to actual image frames, then it won't work on this GPU. It just maxes out and gets stuck right there at that stage, and I have to force turn Comfy UI off and restart it again. So that's what I've tested so far, and this is very new. On the first day, they just launched the announcement from Comfy UI about the Mochi models, and even in these examples where they're using the FP16 models, it still generates only one second. So maybe that's also maxed out in the NVIDIA 4090 based on local consumer PC with the highest GPU configurations, and I think that's it for this testing. One half second videos. I don't think that's going to be usable for any production work. It's only for experiments if we're running that on a local PC. If you really want to bring these AI models to production work, I suggest doing what they do on the official Mochi website, using H100 or similar GPU configurations to generate five or six second videos. But other than using server-side GPUs, I don't think using a consumer PC is able to do five or six seconds with the current Mochi models right here. 
So yeah, I'll keep testing out the FP16 as well. If the split files version here in FP16, using the text code of this version might be getting better. And for people who already have Flux models, if you've played around with FP16, then that's the same files for the text encoder. You don't have to download and duplicate another one again. So yes, so far I see the Mochi one is able to run in Comfy UI, but it's a matter of GPU processing power if it's able to support how many seconds it can generate using a local PC like that. All right, so I was going to end this video recording, but I kept testing this AI model. And after a while, I remembered about the VAE decode, why it freezes and breaks during the generation process if I'm setting over 25 length. Well, previously in the KJ custom nodes for Mochi, it's mentioned that it has to use tile decoder for running higher frame counts, which means that if we have to use the native Comfy UI nodes using the Mochi checkpoint models or the Mochi FP8, FP16 models, we have to use a VAE decode that has the tiling decode. But right now in Comfy UI, the VAE decode by default doesn't have such features. So I suggest Maybe we need to create a VAE decode specifically for Mochi1, just like the empty latent node. I think if you want to use the Mochi1 models to generate AI videos, I suggest going back to using the Mochi wrapper from KJ Custom Node at this moment. That's going to be more stable and able to set higher frame length for your AI video. Also, the other way of using the Mochi model using Comfy UI nodes is where you can use the split files. You have different three files running individually for models. You're able to download that in the same Hugging Face link. Also, the clip loader we're using is the T5 clip, and there's a technical VAE file for loading the VAE. So in this way, we can replace that with the load checkpoint nodes here just by deleting that and replacing the connections of each of these to whichever connection we need. This way, we're able to have a clearer picture of which features and files we're running. You're able to manage more flexibility if you scale the workflow in more custom nodes to manage. And here, I generated another example using the KJ Nodes Mochi wrapper. As you can see, I just generated a pretty realistic style of a Komodo dragon chasing sheep with a natural video style. Looking here, as you can see, the very important thing is that the enable VAE tiling is set to true and I'm able to generate video above one second or 25 frames. That can handle multiple seconds in a local consumer PC. Here I'm using NVIDIA 4090 and let's check out the command prompt window. As you can see, I'm using about five minutes to generate this two seconds video and that's the whole video result from here. And I think that's gonna make the difference by using the VAE tiling. As KJ has also mentioned in the custom nodes itself, since the VAE decoding is extremely heavy, we have to enable the tiling, set it to true. And even in my case using NVIDIA 4090, I still have to turn this option on to create multiple seconds videos. Yeah, so that's the conclusion of using Mochi1 models in Comfy UI. And in the next videos, I'm going to use the Mochi wrappers and the Mochi edit to do video to video features like what you see in some other AI video generator services. The generated result is pretty coherent and looks very natural. On the back, there are some trees and leaves going on and yeah, looks pretty nice. Okay, so one more thing. Here's additional information from my testing. The VAE decode problems here once we are setting the length above 25, which is more than one second, and it will create an error which out of memories, even I'm using the VAE decode tiled. The current working way that I find using native model loader nodes in Comfy UI Instead of using VAE decode tiled, I use the Mochi wrapper VAE decode loader. There's an option where we can load the BF16 VAE decoder from the Mochi preview models files, and using this one, the Mochi wrappers decode custom nodes. We are able to handle the VAE tiling and all the additional information in here. As you can see, we can do more customization. So at this moment, I recommend if you want to generate the Mochi1 AI videos locally using consumer PC and Comfy UI, use the diffusion models by default. The updated post in Comfy UI official website, you can download that, and the load clip you can use, the FP8 or FP16, either one is work. So what I just generated, I was using the FP8, and you can try it with FP16 as well, and then connect to the case sampler. And lastly, we have to modify the Mochi decoder using the Mochi wrapper's custom nodes rather than using the by default, the Comfy UI nodes for the VAE decode tiled. So yeah, that is my testing result. You guys try it. And this workflow I will post on the link description below for everyone. 
and I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.